Alright, today's video is about multiplying and dividing integers. And before we start, I remember that as you're watching this video, if you have any questions, if there's anything that you're unsure of, you should take some time and write down any notes or questions on your actual packet so that when you come to class, you can ask those questions. Be sure to make sure that your notes look exactly like the notes on this video as well. So our objective for today is students will be able to multiply and divide integers. Students will be able to multiply and divide integers. So before we kind of get into what multiplying and dividing integers looks like, I want to first go over what are the different ways that you might see multiplication. We we're used to these two common ways, something like three times, so and a dot, a. That means multiplication. We're used to something like three times a, so using uh, something that looks like an x as multiplication. A couple of other ways that you might see multiplication that we want to be aware of so that we know that that means to multiply is something like three parentheses a. Whenever we see a number touching a parenthesis, like right here, that's going to mean multiplication, and that's something that we have to remember. Okay, that right there, that means multiply. That's something that we're going to have to remember as we start algebra because that's going to tell us, oh, when I see a number touching a parenthesis, that means to multiply. Similarly, you might see something like 3 in parentheses times a in parentheses. Okay, that also means to multiply. You have two parentheses touching each other, and when that happens, it means to multiply. The last way you might see is something like 3a, where the 3 and the a are touching each other. Now, we'll get into this vocabulary a little bit later, but this 3 is called a coefficient, this a is called a variable, and when a coefficient and a variable are touching like that, it means to multiply. So that also means to multiply. Some different ways that you might see division, we're going to change this right here to say division. Some different ways that you might see division. Okay. is you might see something like 5 divided by a. That's something that we're used to. Okay, We have a division sign, 5 divided by a. We also could see it represented as a fraction. So you might see 5 over a. That also means division. So keep in mind that this fraction bar means to divide. And then you might see something like 5 slash a, that's another way of writing a fraction, a forward slash. Alright, so let's get into our notes. Um, when we're going over these, a couple of things that I want you to remember, and we're going to have to, we don't have a ton of room, so we're going to write it right here, a quick key point. And that's actually, we're going to write this, on here I'm going to write this in a different color for you, just so that it's a little bit easier for you to see where the key point is. So a quick key point. When we're going through this, what I want you to think about is first, I want you to think about determine the sign. So the first thing I want you to figure out is what's the sign going to be? You should have, kind of think about that in your head before you even plug something into your calculator, before you even figure it out. First, I want you to think what is the sign going to be? And then second, I want you to evaluate. And evaluate is a way of saying multiply out what the numbers are and see what the answer is. So first we're going to think what is the sign? And second, we're going to evaluate. All right, so when we're dealing with multiplication, the first thing we have is both numbers are positive, have the same sign. So this is where we start to think about, okay, what is the sign going to be if both numbers are positive? If we have two positive numbers, our answer is going to be positive. Two positive numbers, our answer is going to be positive. So for example, if I gave you something like 6 times 2. Okay. Now, before you even figure out what 6 times 2 is, you should be looking at the sign and saying, okay, 6 times 2, is that going to be a positive or a negative number? Well, they're both positive, so the answer is going to be a positive 12. Similarly, let's say we had six, uh, 12 divided by 2. Okay, before I even evaluate what 12 divided by 2 is, I'm going to look at the signs and say, okay, I have two positive numbers. I know that if I multiply or divide two positive numbers, I get 
a positive answer, so my answer is going to be positive 6. Right? So that's what we mean by this key point. Think about what is the sign going to be, because as we get into more complicated problems, that's going to help make sure that you get the right sign on your number in case you're going quickly or you're trying to go quickly on a test or a quiz or an interim. We want to make sure, does our answer seem reasonable? And a way to do that is say, okay, let's predict what the sign will be before I even evaluate the answer. So let's keep going. Uh, let's talk about negative numbers. All right, both numbers, numbers are negative. So they have the same sign again, but the sign happens to be negative. So when we multiply or divide numbers that are both negative, our answers are always going to be positive. So two negative numbers multiplied or divided together is going to be a positive answer. So to give you an example, let's say we had negative 3 times negative 2. Notice I used the number touching a parenthesis, that means multiply. Before I even evaluate what negative 3 times negative 2 is, I want to think about I have a negative times a negative. My answer has to be positive. So negative 3 times negative 2, well 3 times 2 is 6, and a negative times a negative is positive, so my answer is going to be a positive 6. Uh, very similar, let's just say negative 6 divided by negative 3. I have a negative divided by a negative. It's two negative signs means I'm going to have a positive answer. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is going to give me a positive 2. So again, we're predicting what our answer is going to be before it actually comes. Let's say that we had one number is positive and one number is negative. So they have opposite signs. So one number is negative, one number is positive. Whenever you are multiplying or dividing something and they have opposite signs, the answer will always be negative. The answer will always be negative. So let's give an example. Let's say we had negative 3 times positive 2. We have one negative sign one positive number, I'm sorry, one negative number, one positive number. So a negative 3 times a positive 2 I know is going to give me a negative answer. And negative 3 times 2, well, 3 times 2 is 6, so my answer is going to be a negative 6. Give you another example. Let's say we had something like 12 divided by negative 3. Again, predict your answer first. 12 a positive 12, a negative 3, I have one positive, one negative, that means I'm going to have a negative answer, and 12 divided by negative 3 is going to give me a negative 4. Okay? Alright, we're going to learn about two more things, and this has to do with uh, when you have, when you're multiplying and dividing numbers, and there's a lot of numbers all together, meaning you maybe have three or four numbers you're multiplying at once or a couple numbers that you're dividing. And we want a, a quick and easy way of saying, all right, just to predict, what's our answer going to be? Is it going to be negative or is it going to be positive? So if you have an even number of negative integers, an even number of negative integers, that means that the number of negative numbers you're multiplying happen to be even, the answer is always going to be positive. Okay? So let me give you an example. Let's say we had negative 6 times 2 times negative 2. Now, if I go through this, how many negative numbers do I have? I have 1, 2. I have two negative numbers. 2 is an even number, so that means that no matter what I end up with a numerical answer for negative 6 times 2 times negative 2, my answer is going to be positive because there are two negative numbers. So my answer is going to be positive, and I know that. All right, now let's just evaluate what that would be. Well, negative 6 times 2, that's going to give us negative 12. And a negative 12 times a negative 2, that's going to give us a positive... 24. Okay. Notice that our sign that we predicted matched what our answer actually was. All right. Let's do an example of an odd number of integers. An odd number of integers. 
So let's say, for example, you have something like positive 2 times negative 3 times negative 2 times negative 1. 2 times negative 3 times negative 2 times negative 1. Let's just count the number of negative integers we have. We have a negative 3, negative 2, a negative 1. 1, 2, 3 negative integers we have. So, whenever we have an odd number of negative integers, okay, 1, 2, 3, that's an odd number, our answer is going to be negative. We're going to have a negative answer. So I already know, I can already predict that my answer is going to be negative. And then let's just go ahead and evaluate it. 2 times negative 3 is going to give us a negative 6. I'm going to bring down my negative 2 and my negative 1. Negative 6 times negative 2, that's going to give me a positive 12. And 12 times negative 1, that's going to give me a negative 12. And notice our prediction matched with what our answer was. Those are the rules for multiplying and dividing integers. What I want you guys to do now is we're going to actually do some guided practice. So, you can use your calculator on this, um, but but what I want you to usually, but what I want you to do right now is don't use your calculator. I, I want you to first look at where it says guided practice, and I want you to predict first what are all of the signs going to be. So first, you're going to predict what are the signs, then figure out what the answer is. Go ahead and pause your video, try guided practice 1 through 9, and then when you're ready, when you have your answers, plus play, and I will show you what the answers are. Alright, here are your answers. Go ahead and check your answers. Double check that you have the correct sign. For each of these, you should have predicted, okay? especially in some of these ones where we see more than one number being multiplied. All right. So, for example, on something like number 8, we should have noticed that we have two negative integers. When we multiply even number of integers, we're going to have a positive answer. Okay? Or, for example, over here we have two negative integers. We should have known our answer to be positive. We have one integer. That's an odd number of integers that's going to give us a negative answer. So use those tricks to look at your answers and see whether or not they're reasonable. We will continue practicing this in class. Make sure you write down any questions that you have and get ready to practice during class.